Hello everyone, thank you for joining me today. My name is Kafaya and I'm a community learning specialist with DoSpace and for today's DoSpace digital after school coded session, I would be facilitating. We will be learning together today. So we have a few things planned for today, so we're going to get right onto it. So if you remember from our previous lessons for the past few weeks, we've been exploring the world of Cano coding and we've been using the Cano coding interface to practice and get familiar with the different like programming concepts. So we've walked through loops, we've walked through variables and now, and last week we worked on events and today we're going to go on to learning about logic and programming through the Cano coding interface. So what we're going to do is we're going to watch an introductory video. Today's video is quite lengthy, but I promise you it is worth it. So let's just pay attention and grab a drink, grab a snack, just so we can have fun with it. And we're also going to practice logic just the same way we practiced all the other um, concepts by completing the challenges on the Cano Coding website. So, this is what you should expect that we do today. So we're going to watch the video that explains the concept of logic and especially if statements. If you're familiar with coding or programming in general, you would, under, you would know, you'd have an idea of what if statements are. After that, we're going to go on to the challenges. First one, starting with the magical if statements, quiz your friends, and the glitching grids. I'm quite excited. So without saying too much, let's just get right into it. Like I said, this is the video we're going to be starting with. Let me make sure that my sound is on so you guys can hear the video. Okay. Hey there, welcome back to Cano Club. In this video, we're going to be looking at logic and more specifically, if statements. An if statement is kind of like putting a question in your code that asks if something's happened or not. And then depending on the answer we get, we can make something happen. Let's say I was making a game. I could make an if statement that asks whether my character has hit an enemy or not. And if it has, then I could do something like increase my score by one or detract numbers from the enemy's health. Let's make a creation with an if statement so I can show you how they work. I think for this creation, I'm going to make something a little bit weird. I'm thinking about a UFO, like a flying saucer that abducts animals because apparently that's what they do. I don't know what they're doing with them. Let's start out by adding a sticker part for our UFO. So I'm gonna open the parts tab and grab a sticker. And I'm gonna go to our sticker tray to change the image. And I'm gonna drag out that block and pop it in the when app starts event. I'm gonna click on our crocodile. So I'm gonna go down all the way to the space section and click on that. And right at the bottom here is a lovely flying saucer sticker. And I think he's a little bit too small. So I'm going to grab a set size block from our sticker tray and drag that in. And currently it's 100% size. I want it to be about 150% of the original size. There we go. I think I'm also going to adjust where the UFO is. Uh, right now it's like dead center in the middle of the canvas. I want it to be up a bit so that there's a bit more room for things going on underneath it. So I'm going to go back to the sticker tray and get a move to block and drag that in. Uh, so that's moved it up to zero, zero. I need it over a little bit. I want it back in the middle. So I'm going to put 400. That's halfway across the canvas. And I'm thinking maybe 150. Yeah, I think that's a good Y position. So what I want to do is make it so that an animal starts at the bottom of the canvas and moves its way up into the UFO, right? So to do that, I'm going to have to use a loop so that I can make something move over time. So let's go into the control tray 
and grab an every one seconds block. And I'm going to change that to every one millisecond. So it's running every single millisecond. So it's running really fast. So at the moment, our UFO is kind of in the middle of some kind of white void thing. So I'm going to grab a background color from the draw tray uh, and put him in the sky. I'm going to make it a nice blue sky by changing the background color. There we go. So he's actually in the sky now. So now I'm going to draw the animal that's getting taken up into the UFO. So I'm going to go into the draw tray. But before I draw the stamp of the animal, I've got to grab a move to block. Because remember, you've got to pick where you're going to draw something before you decide what you're drawing. So I'm going to move it into the middle of the canvas so it's underneath the UFO. Remember, the UFO is an at an X position of 400. So we're going to move that to 400 as well. Now I'm going to leave the Y for now and I'll show you why in a minute. <laughs> so I'm going to open up the draw tray and grab our stamp. Pop it in there. There we go. We <laughs> have a crocodile. I think I'm going to go a bit more classic. Um, I don't know what it is with aliens always abducting cows, but that's definitely a thing. So I'm going to change it so that we're abducting a cow. Now, if you remember the video I did about variables, you remember that I used a, I made a balloon float up through the sky using a variable. So that's what I'm going to do with our cow. I'm going to use a variable to make it move up. So let's open up the variables tray and grab a set variable block. And I'm going to plug that in above our loop. We need to put the variable above our loop because we need to set what it is before we start using it. So I'm going to change the name of our variable because right now it's item, which isn't very descriptive. I'm going to go and create a new variable. And I think I'm going to call it cow height. There we go. I'm going to save that. And I'm going to go back into the variables tray to grab a number block and click it in there. And we're going to start it, set the cow's height so it starts at the bottom of the canvas so it can travel up. So I'm going to change it to 600. And I'm going to then use our variable. So I'm going to drag out variable block and connect it to the Y position of the cow and I'm going to change that to cow height there we go so it's at the bottom of the canvas now at 600 pixels down so just like we did in the variables video we're going to make the variable change over time to make the cow move up so open up the math tray and grab this block here and we're going to pop this at the bottom of our loop and if you just change item to cow height, which is the name of our variable. And right now it'll go 600, 601, 602. We want, so it's going down. So it's like fall off the bottom of our canvas. So I'm going to change that to minus one. So every millisecond, it's going to go 600, 599, 598, 597. It's going to keep going all the way up. <laughs> And it looks very funny right now. That's because it's a stamp. So it's drawing it every frame. And it kind of makes it this weird splodgy cow effect. Um, so to fix this, we're going to go into the draw tray and grab a clear drawing block. So if we put this clear drawing block at the top of our loop, we'll get a nice clean canvas every frame and our cow will look like it's moving up rather than looking like it's a tube of toothpaste. So let me just restart the code so we can have a little look at what we've made so far again. So as you can see, we've got a bit of a problem. Our cow is floating up to the UFO, but it just kind of keeps floating into space. Whereas what we really want is for it to kind of disappear into the UFO like it's been abducted. So to fix this, I'm going to use an if statement that brings the cow back down to the bottom of the canvas every time it reaches the UFO. So then it looks like a kind of like an endless stream of cows being abducted into space. So remember, like I said earlier, an if statement is like a way of asking a question to see if something's happened or not in your code. So let's grab an if statement block. 
those live in the logic tray. So if we open up logic, there's a whole lot of weird looking blocks in here. We're gonna grab the first one. It's kind of like an event block. It's kind of C-shaped or like a loop block. It's got space inside for code to go in. So I'm gonna grab this block and I'm gonna put it inside of our loop. The slightly strange thing about if blocks is that they look a little bit short, like they're missing a part. Well, that's because you can plug different blocks into the end of it. We're gonna use the most common one that you're gonna plug into an if statement that compares two different things. So if we open up the logic tray and if we get this block here, it's kind of got two gaps and it's got an equal sign in the middle. So I'm gonna drag that out and I'm gonna connect it to the end of our if statement. So that kind of looks like one full block now, right? So as you can see, this block has like two other little block shaped gaps for us to plug things into. And that's how we ask our question. So we're going to use this to check if our cow has reached the UFO. And that's the question we're gonna ask. So how do we do that? Well, if we go into the variables tray and we grab a variable block and plug it into the first gap. And if we change that to cow height, remember that's the variable we made earlier that's keeping track of whereabouts our cow is on the canvas. So that's our first thing. We need to compare it to a number. So if we open up the math tray and grab a number and plop it into the second gap. So we, we want to ask if our cow has gotten to a certain height. So we're drawing our UFO at 150 pixels down on the canvas. And we want to check if it's gotten around there. So I'm gonna change this number to 200. So what this block here is doing is that every one millisecond, it's asking if our variable that's holding how high up on the canvas our cow is has reached 200 yet. And we could do something that responds if the answer to our question is that yes, the cow height variable is at 200. So now we're gonna do something really smart with our if statement. We're going to use it to change where the position of the cow is if it hits the UFO. So let's open up the variables tray and get another set variable block. What we're going to do is we're going to open up our cow height variable again and change it. We're going to grab another number block from the variables tray and we're going to say when it hits 200 move it back down to the bottom of the canvas. So if I set the cow height variable to 600 when it hits our UFO, it will jump right back down to the bottom again. So let's just quickly go over what's happening with all these variables, because it is a little bit confusing. So to start off, we use our variable cow height to set where the cow gets drawn from at the bottom of the canvas at 600 pixels. And then we move and draw it at our variable. Then after we've done that, we take one away from the current height, so it keeps moving up the canvas. And then we have our if statement that asks if our variable is equals to 200. Has it gotten up to the UFO? That's what the question's asking. And if it has, we need to change our cow height variable so that it's back down to 600, just like it was at the start. So it moves the cow back down to the earth. I'm gonna finish off this creation by adding a few more little bits to make the tractor beam so that it actually is using some of that cool alien tech to abduct the cow. <laughs> Let's open up the draw tray again. And I'm gonna grab another move to block. I'm gonna put it in our loop and I'm gonna move you know what, I'm gonna start drawing the beam first and then we can move it into place. So I'm gonna make it a nice green beam. I'm gonna change the fill color to green. And I'm going to draw a triangle. There we go. 
go. It's a very tiny triangle. You can't even see it. It's only five pixels by five pixels. So I'm going to change it so that it's about 300 pixels wide and 500 pixels tall. So let's move the exposition into the middle of the screen. So it's coming from the center of the UFO. So I'm going to change that to 400. And we're going to move this down. I think if this is at 200, I want it to start around here. I'm thinking 300 or so. Mm, maybe a bit more. 350. Okay, perfect. Problem is it's kind of drawing over everything. I think I'm going to add a transparency block. So we're going to make it see-through. So let's get a draw set transparency. And like with a fill color and moving it, you need to put it in your code before you draw your, your shape because you need to set it up first. And I'm going to set the transparency to 30. Mm, yeah, that's about right. Now, we've got a couple of problems that we've now made with the cow. The cow, firstly, is a bit too big to be going into our UFO. And secondly, um, he's very see-through. Um, because, because this is in a loop, when it loops back round to the top of the code and we draw the cow again, the transparency is still at 30 for the beam. So let's grab another draw block for, and another transparency block. I'm going to put that above the cow and we're going to change that to 100 and there we go. You can see him better now. And I think for my final finishing touch, we're going to make him a little bit smaller. Mm, maybe 60. There we go. One last thing. I'm going to be very cheeky and I'm going to use our cow height variable and plug it into the rotation of the cow. Look at him go! <laughs> I kind of want to be that cow, it looks fun. <laughs> and there you have it. Who knew that if statements could help aliens abduct cows? Awesome. That was such a cool video and a cool creation that she did. So, just so that we can explore each statements and logic on our own we're gonna go ahead and go on to the next challenge or the first challenge which is logic right here okay so magical if statements in this creation you're going to be moving things around on the canvas so you're going to need a loop so the first thing to do is to open our control tray to get our loop. So every one second or every one millisecond, we're going to, okay, I'm going into this, into the sticker tray. And I'm also going to go add a part for my mouse and hmm. so instead of giving my stamp a movement it looks like my stamp is going to move in whichever direction I move my mouse okay so move your mouse or finger around the canvas and watch the croc follow it next you'll be adding an if block to make the sticker change depending on where it is. So just for testing purposes, this is me moving my mouse all over my canvas and as you can see, my crocodile is moving alongside me. Okay, so next we're going to add if statements Blocks to do with if statements leave inside of the logic tray. Open it up and look inside. So this is me clicking on the logic tray and I'm going to drag the block, the if block, and connect it to my loop. 
next thing to do is to attach another block to my if block to make it work so this is the condition if you remember from the video she attached these two blocks together to get her to get her a complete if statement so if statements are used to compare two things to see if they are the same or different from each other next we're going to open our mouse tray and connect our x yeah, and I'm going back into my math tray and I'm attaching my zero position. And I'm going to change this to 100 or 400, just like the instruction says. So we want the sticker to change if it's over 400 pixels across. So change the equal sign to greater than from, drop in, from the drop down list. So I'm going to just do as it said and change it to greater than. Now I'm going into my sticker tray and I'm going to select the sticker image and I'm attaching that to the rest of the block. And I'm also changing my crocodile to a horse. So next it says to make the background color change too. So to do that, we're going to go into our draw tray and I'm going to select a background color and I'm going to change it to a dark color. I like this color instead. Awesome. So move your mouse over to the right of the canvas and watch the crocodile transform. Okay, well, it already transformed into a horse, but yeah. So next, see the else area of your if statement so the else area is right here you're going to use that to transform your horse into a unicorn so i'm going to go here and set my background color first and i want to change my background color to yellow And now I'm going to make that horse become a unicorn. Okay. So you see in this corner, well, let's just go ahead. So I'm going into my sticker tray and I'm going to select the sticker image and I'm going to go ahead and change my crocodile to a unicorn. And now we're going to make it extra magical and colorful with some confetti. So I'm going in here. And I'm going to select the block that draws and moves to a random point. And I'm also going to go back into my draw tray to select a fill color. And now I'm going back to choose a random color. Back into my draw tray, I'm going to draw a circle. Awesome. Now we're going back into our math tray and we're going to select the block that chooses a random number. Move your mouse around. You see the confetti stays when you show the horse. So let's add a clear drawing block to clear it up. Oh, okay. So when I have a horse, my confetti stays, even though my confetti is just for my unicorn. This is cool. Awesome. So I'm going back into my draw tray and I'm going to select the block that helps me clear the drawing and that goes right in my if part. So let's close this and see what we have right here. So whenever, depending on where I move my horse or my mouse, I either get a horse or I get a unicorn with a confetti. So Right here in this corner, it's just a happy, happy horse. And at the top corner, it is a unicorn. Just to answer the question in the chat, I'm on the Cano Coding website. I can go ahead and copy the website name for you if you give me a second. Before we go on to the next challenge, I'm just going to put the 
you're going to have to create an account and you need adult supervision to do that. So I just put the name of the website in the chat. I hope that I wasn't too late. <laughs> okay, so we're going to go ahead, as you can see, moving my horse to the different corners of my, my canvas. I either get a horse or a unicorn. So basically my canvas is divided into two. One corner celebrates my horse, the other corner celebrates my unicorn. So horse, unicorn, horse, unicorn, horse, unicorn. Awesome. We're going to go on to our next challenge, which is to quiz your friends and ask them a few questions. So for this challenge, it says test your friends by asking them a question about you. So let's see, add a text part to write your question. So I'm going to add a text part and I'm going into my text tray and I'm going to select the block that says move text to X and Y position. So I'm going to go ahead and change my X from zero to 400 and I'll change my Y from zero to 200. Next, I'm going to go back into my text tray and I'm going to select the block that gives me a text value and I'm connecting that block to the rest. And next, I'm going to change the text to a question that asks, what is my favorite animal? Okay, so next I'm going to add a sticker and for my sticker I'm going to give my sticker a position and for my X position I'm going to change that to 400 and my Y position is going to be 450. Give me a second, I'm just going to go turn the light back on. Okay, I'm back. So next we're going into our sticker tray and I'm going to choose a sticker image. And now I'm going to select a cloud, it looks like, or a thought. Next, we're going to Add a way for your friends to type in answers using the parts button. So I'm going to add the text input and now I have a box on my canvas and that's for the text input. So when you ask your friends to guess your, an the, your favorite animal, this is where it's going to go. So try clicking or tapping on it to type something in this is how your friend would answer a question. Hello. So that's what your friend's answer would look like. Awesome. So we're sure that that works. Next, we're going to go into our text input and then select the text input on callback. Now it is time for us to add our if statements. So we're going into our logic tray and we're selecting our two friends that help us with our if statements. And now we're going to go ahead and use the if block to check whether the answer, the answer typed into the box is correct. So I'm going back in here to my text input tray and I'm going to select the block for my input value and I'm going back to my variable tray and here it's going to quote the input. So type the answer to your question in here. For example, 
what I've asked is what my favorite animal is. I would type a cat inside the block and remember to hit next when you're finished typing. So I'm going to go ahead and type cat and oh wrong block oops cat and next the text input value block stores whatever has been typed in the text input box on your canvas if the statement then checks if it's the same as your answer so basically what it entails is that your friends would guess what your favorite animal is and then if it matches what's inside of this box then all is well so let's move on to see how to complete the challenge change the neck change the text at the top when the answer is correct open the two okay i'm going into my text tray and i'm going to select the text value text and now i'm going to say correct Awesome. Make the sticker change to open the streak. So we're changing the sticker. And now I'm going to select a cat. Finally, make the background green when your friend gets the answer. So I'm going to go into my my draw tray to select a background color. And now I'm going to change that to green. Awesome. So let's so oops, let's test this out. What's my favorite animal? Cat. That's awesome. So the great thing about this is that we can The great thing about this is if I go in here and change my, if I change it to a frog, let's see if we have a frog right here. I'm going to change my sticker image to a frog. Hmm, do we have a frog? No, we don't. Let's do elephant. So, awesome. So let's try this again. Awesome. So now you guys can see how that works. And so I'm going to go back and move on to the next challenge. Just remember, if you're going to change the animal that you want, you change the text input value right here, and you also change the sticker image to make sure it matches what animal your favorite animal is. Okay. So now we're going on to the next challenge, which I believe is the last challenge for now. And we're going to, the name of this challenge is called Glitching Grids. So we're going to use if blocks to create a glitching screen effect. Next. First, you need to set up some variables that you'll use later. I'm going to open my variables tray and set item. And I'm going to change item to X. Next, I'm going back into my variable tray and I'm going to set my X to zero. Now I'm back to my variable tray and I'm going to set my Y, I believe. I'm setting Y also to zero. Awesome. My variables are set now and I'm going to add a loop. So every one second, or every one millisecond, every hundred millisecond, I, I'm going into my draw tray. I want to change my color to a random color. So next, I'm going to 
go back into my draw tray and select my positions and now I'm going into my variable tray and I'm going to change item to X back to my variables tray I'm changing Y okay so now I'm going to draw a square so I'm drawing a square with the size of 100 awesome now I'm going back into my math tray and I'm going to change my positions from 0 to 100 now I'm going into my logic tray and I'm going to select my each statements blocks cool and back to my variables tray I'm going to select item and change item to X back to my variables tray set X to 0 and change 0 to 800 next I am going to go back into my variables tray and do the same thing for change my item to X and again awesome by setting the X variable back to zero your blocks start drawing from the edge to the left again till they reach the edge awesome and that's what we can see reflected right here on the screen so we're going to go back and see what's next so now let's make it start a new line of squares underneath it so i'm going to open my math tray and select the item block and now we're changing item to y and 1 to 100 looking good but we can add another bit of logic to start the squares at the top again when they reach the bottom so now I'm going back into my logic tray and choosing another block for my if statements. And now I'm going back to my variables tray and I'm going to set my item and change that to Y. And back to my variables tray, I'm going to select zero and change zero to 600. Awesome. So now I'm in my variable tray. I'm going to set my item, which I'm changing to Y again, and I'm going to set it to zero. And now when the last square gets drawn, it'll start again at the top. Let's speed things up by changing how often the loop runs. So every one second. Now I'm going to add a speaker. Hmm. And then in my speaker tray, I'm going to play a sound. Okay. Now we're going to add some volume to our speaker. And in my math tray, I'm going to between choose a random number between 50 and 200. Okay. So that is it. All right. Right here, I'm going to turn on the sound so you guys can hear what I hear.
brings us to the end of our lesson on glitches. Let's see if we go back to the challenge. Yeah, we made it to the end. Awesome. So that brings us to the end of today's class. Thank you for joining me today. And if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, please send them to us at hello at dospace.org. I hope you guys enjoyed learning about if statements. And I'll see you guys in our next lesson. Okay? And make sure to go onto the Candle Coding website. The, the, co the link to the website is in the chat. So make sure to go onto the website and practice using the Cano coding interface at your own time. I'm sure you would have fun doing it. And it's so easy to work through the website because they give you steps and information on how to just they help you navigate through the website. So thank you guys for joining me today. I'll see you again next time. Bye.